An investigation is underway after a Lithuanian couple were found dead in Cavan. Accidental poisoning is suspected. They were saving up money, trying, like, living. I thought Ireland was better than Lithuania. Scaling up COVID vaccinations, mass centres are ready as healthcare workers begin getting the AstraZeneca jab. No more signing on for retirees as a new weekly benefit is confirmed to bridge the pension gap. Limerick families shock as they discover their missing son's body was found 25 years ago but not identified. Relieved and disappointed because we always hoped that he'd walk in the door from there. A guard investigation is underway after the bodies of a man and a woman were found at a house in County Cavan last night. The couple, who were originally from Lithuania, had been living in the area for a number of years. It's thought they may have died as a result of accidental poisoning. Post-mortem examinations and toxicology tests are underway. The bodies of the couple were removed from the house this afternoon. Rolandus Jarmalvikius and his partner Rita Martin Kiene were found at the house they rented at Drumbrawn in Clover Hill at around 8 o'clock yesterday evening. It's a quiet, remote area, not far from the main cavern to Clonus Road. Prayers were said earlier as neighbours spoke of their shock. It's very shocked to hear it here. Ah, yeah, very quiet. Uh, like everyone kind of stays on their own uh, here, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just knew them to see them all right, that's all, yeah. yeah. Very, very sad, yeah. Guardy say the couple hadn't been seen for a number of days. The alarm was raised when a family member became concerned. The couple had been living in this area for a number of years and worked across the border in County Fermanagh. Rolandas Jarmalvikius had family living nearby. To be honest. It was good. Good, yeah. He was a hard-working person. He came to Ireland not knowing how to speak. He tried to make a living out here. He was a, he was a calm man. He was a normal man. He tried to make a living out in Ireland. There was no forced entry at the house and one line of inquiry is accidental poisoning as a cause or contributor in the deaths. But Gardy say the results of post-mortem examinations and toxicology tests will determine the course of this investigation. And Sinead joins us now from Cavan Garda Station. Sinead, what are Gardy saying this evening about this case? Well, post-mortem examinations uh, won't take place on the bodies now until tomorrow. Um, the state pathologist will perform those uh, post-mortem examinations at Our Lady's Hospital in Navan, where the bodies were taken to this afternoon. As you heard in that report, Garthi, uh, doesn't appear at this stage they're looking at anything suspicious here, but they are looking at the possibility of accidental poisoning. Uh, we understand the couple hadn't been in work in a number of weeks, uh, they hadn't been seen for a number of days, and we understand they were drinking at the house. Now, they are trying to establish a timeline. Uh, they're trying to work out when the couple may have last been in contact with family or friends. And as you heard in that report today, uh, Darius, the brother of Rolanda, saying that he's heartbroken uh, by what has happened. He said his brother had come to Ireland to make a better life for himself and now his family are making arrangements for his funeral. OK, Sinead, thank you very much indeed for that. Well, retirees over the age of 65 will no longer have to sign on for the dole until they can claim the state pension. A new benefit has been announced to help thousands of people who fall into this bracket. In 2014, the then Fine Gael Labour Coalition raised the qualification age for the state pension to 66. That created a problem for those whose employment contracts obliged them to retire at 65. To bridge that gap, they were allowed to go on job seekers benefit. But that left them with a loss of 45 euro a week or 2,300 a year. Many, like Christy Waters, who campaigned with SIPTU to stop a further rise to 67, complained it was demeaning that under the job seeker rules, they had to sign on or be genuinely seeking work. 
How would you expect people who've worked all their lives, paying into a contribution, force them to sign on the dole and be available for training courses and apply for jobs that they knew they were never going to get? Under the benefit payment for over 65s announced today, recipients will still only get €203 Euro but won't have to prove they're seeking work. What we agreed in the programme for government was that uh, you would receive the equivalent of the job seekers benefit without any of the conditions uh, which meant you either had to sign on or actively be looking for work. If at the age of 65 your working life is over and people should have the option to retire on the full rate of the state pension, not what is being offered which is effectively job seekers without the need to actually be job seeking. Meanwhile, the government has deferred implementation of the auto-enrolment pension scheme, which would see government, employers and employees all contributing to pensions to avoid retirement poverty. Experts say this is too serious to be kicked down the road. It is ultra important that it's implemented rapidly because the earlier people start saving for pension, or being made to save for pension, if you like, the, the, the better it's going to be and the less dependent people will be solely on the state pension contributory. The Minister will bring a memo to Cabinet shortly but it remains unclear when auto-enrolment will actually be implemented. Ingrid Miley, RTE News. Still to come, finding Nisha, couple praised for mountainside rescue of a dog missing for two weeks. And in sport, former out-half Ronan O'Gara gives his thoughts on Ireland's Six Nations opening defeat to Wales. Thousands of healthcare workers have begun receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine today. Work is continuing on establishing vaccination hubs before the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines are rolled out to people aged over 85 from next Monday. Well, this evening, the Department of Health has reported that six more people have died with COVID-19 and that there have been 829 new cases of the virus confirmed. Of those being treated in hospital with COVID-19, 176 of them are in intensive care units. The 14-day incidence rate per 100,000 nationally now stands at 326.9. And of the tests carried out over the past seven days, 5.9% were positive. On the vaccinations front, 151,212 people have now received their first dose. 79,554 have received their second dose. And in Northern Ireland, there were 12 further deaths of people with COVID-19 and 296 new cases of the virus confirmed in the past 24 hours. At Cork City Hall today, work continued on setting up one of the country's first mass vaccination centres. Inside, the transformation of the concert hall is almost complete. There will be two similar centres in Dublin and Galway, with plans for 40 other hubs around the country. After the arrival at the weekend of the first batch of AstraZeneca vaccines, now reserved for younger age groups, thousands of healthcare workers started receiving their first jab today. While GPs will be involved in the rollout of mRNA vaccines to people aged over 70 from next Monday, doctors say services will still operate as normal, but patience is advised. We're open, uh, we can see people safely and we want them because we don't want people uh, ignoring symptoms, uh, particularly uh, more serious things, so something that might be suggestive that, that, that their heart was starting at them. On this day last month, the highest daily number of new COVID-19 cases was recorded, 8,248. But since then, the figures have fallen, standing at 1,024 yesterday. During the same period, the number of deaths reported has fluctuated, rising from 20 this day last month, peaking at 101 last week to 12 yesterday. The HSE has said the ongoing high number of cases is a concern. Those cases have yet to become, some of them, sick enough to be hospitalised. They have yet to become sick enough to go into ITU. And sadly, some have yet to become sick enough and die. So as long as we're seeing high numbers of cases of this order, we should be concerned. Meanwhile, the latest vaccination figures show that 230,776 vaccines have now been administered, of which 151,212 were first doses. Fregal O'Brien, RTE News. Well, the National Public Health Emergency Team is currently holding a briefing at the Department of Health this evening. So let's go live there now to our health correspondent, Fergal Bowers. We're also joined from Leinster House by our political correspondent, Micheál Lahan. Fergal, the figures are quite down this evening. Can you talk us through the latest? 
Uh, yes, they are. We've uh, six uh, further deaths reported. Five occurred in February and one in January. And all deaths, obviously, a source of great sadness. Um, we have heard that the, we expect to see the level of mortality reduce now in time. And these figures on the number of deaths are down in what we've seen in recent times. So that, that's important. In relation uh, to cases, uh, significant, significant fall there, 829. So that's the lowest since before Christmas in terms of a daily uh, figure. I mean, at one stage we had a peak of 6,520 uh, reported on one day here. So that's a considerable drop. In relation to the numbers in intensive care units, 76. That's reducing uh, from a peak of 220. And Professor Philip Nolan said here that we continue to see steady progress in relation to case numbers. Now on vaccinations, uh, 151,212 uh, first doses, that's up to last Friday, and 79,554 second doses up to last Friday. However, if you look at Wednesday's figures a couple of days earlier, um, uh, th th there's a reduced figure on the first doses today, not sure why that is, but we'll have to check that out. We were promised daily uh, data uh, from the HSE on vaccinations. Uh, there's no sign of that happening yet either. All right, Frigel. Now, hold the government will be watching those trends Frigel's been talking about there, about how the virus is in the community. And there's some indications as to what they might do next regarding restrictions. Can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, some indications coming from government today, Katrina, about those next steps and one of them around housing and the return of the construction sector in full. Now, while some essential work is continuing there, there are over 60,000 construction workers in receipt of the pandemic unemployment payment. But the housing minister, Dara O'Brien, saying that construction should be able to return on March 5th and also the Cabinet Housing Committee meeting this afternoon online and that view expressed there as well. So he's saying that about seven to possibly even eight 800 new builds are being affected every week as a result of that pause uh, that's taking place in that sector. So that is one of the first things that could return. And of course, schools and construction always looked at kind of together as things that may return quicker than the rest uh, and the wider economy. Also, in relation to, to economics, the Social Protection Minister is saying that she thinks the pandemic unemployment payment will be extended now until the summer. And I suppose it's after the summer, though, that the real economic questions could be asked because there are two uh, key funds there. There's the contingency fund of €2 billion Euro and the recovery fund of €3.4 billion. Euro. And if there wasn't a wider opening of the economy in the summertime, well then the economic picture could be challenging indeed. And we hold there was an update as well on the provision of education for those with special needs today. Yeah, this, the Minister with Responsibility for Special Needs Education, the Minister of State, Josepha Madigan, speaking uh, here in the Shannon, which met in the Dáil Chamber this afternoon, saying that as has been outlined, that special schools will return on Thursday and then on the 22nd of February, special classes and mainstream schools. But she was pressed by several senators uh, to answer the question as to when uh, people who are in mainstream schools and attending mainstream classes but have uh, extra needs, when will they return to school? The minister said there is a commitment to make this happen sometime after the 22nd of February, which he didn't have a firm date. All right, Micheál and Fergal, thank you both for that. Daniel Kinahan, who has been identified in the High Court in Dublin as a senior figure in organised crime, has said that he is not part of a criminal gang in Ireland or anywhere in the world. The statement was issued to a British radio station earlier today. Daniel Kinahan has issued two statements in the past 10 days, disavowing any links with organised crime, in spite of the fact that he has been identified in the courts here as a major crime figure. At least 65 Kinahan gang members, including Daniel's friends and associates, Freddie Thompson, Liam Brannigan and Thomas Bomber Kavanagh, are now in jail. But today, Daniel insisted he's not part of a criminal gang here or anywhere in the world. He also claimed to be the victim of a campaign of vilification. But the Gardaí say that it is in fact the Kinahan organised crime gang that has been engaged in a campaign of disinformation. I have seen, uh, for example, uh, um, bogus documents purporting to emanate from uh, international law enforcement agencies. The most important aspect of fake news is that people are not accountable for it. And uh, I certainly, uh, if those people come forward uh, and uh, open themselves to scrutiny uh, about the evidence to support the, uh, what they're saying, uh, we'll certainly react to that.
Kinahan also denied he had anything to do with the credible threat to a BBC journalist following last week's Panorama programme about his links to boxing and organised crime, insisting he has never threatened a reporter or journalist or asked anyone to do that for him. The actor Paul Meskel, who's preparing for a boxing movie, also said today he was no longer training at an MTK gym in Australia and was not aware of the connection between MTK and Daniel Kinahan. Two of the highest courts in Ireland have found that Daniel Kinahan controlled and managed the Kinahan organised crime group and that that criminal gang is responsible for drug trafficking, firearms offences and execution-style murders on an international scale. Daniel Kinahan has not contested any of these findings in court and the Gardaí say they are continuing to dismantle the Kinahan organised crime group. Paul Reynolds, RTE News, Garda Headquarters, Dublin. Lawyers for the family of Nora Koran have challenged an inquest ruling that the 15-year-old died by misadventure after going missing while on holiday in Malaysia. Her body was discovered after a massive search at a resort outside Kuala Lumpur in 2019. Earlier this month, a coroner ruled that her death was accidental. Nora's parents, Maeve and Sebastian Koran, want the ruling to be referred to the High Court. Remains found off the West Coast 25 years ago have been identified as those of a man who went missing from Limerick in 1996. The family of Dennis Walsh has been told that advances in DNA analysis led to the formal identification in recent days. Dennis Walsh was 23 years of age when he went missing after leaving his home in the Cahar Davin area of Limerick in March 1996. His disappearance sparked a widespread search and numerous appeals for information in the weeks and months that followed. A number of reported sightings in the Limerick area and further afield yielded no clues as to the young man's whereabouts. But now, almost a quarter of a century after the missing persons file was first opened at Maerstone Guard the station, a breakthrough. Mr Walsh's parents were told at the weekend that samples taken from a body recovered off Inish Moor in April 1996 positively matched DNA from the Walsh family. Relieved and disappointed because we always hoped that he'd walk in the door from there, you know. The remains found off the Galway coast were taken to University Hospital Galway in April 1996 and stored there for some time as the effort to identify them continued but attempts over the years to match samples were fruitless until the developments as a result of scientific advancements in recent weeks. We haven't received his remains yet, but it would be such a relief to be able to give him a Christian burial and we'll have a grave. We can go, put flowers or whatever and say our prayers and talk to him. Pat McGrath, RTE News, Galway. Garda checkpoints have been set up along the border to enforce COVID-19 regulations. People travelling from Northern Ireland into the Republic are being turned back if they do not have an essential reason for travel. They can also face a €100 Euro fine. A Garda checkpoint near the monaghan Tyrone border. Many more have been set up along the border with Northern Ireland to enforce new COVID-19 regulations. From today, Garda can issue on-the-spot fines of €100 Euro to people resident in Northern Ireland who cross the border for non-essential travel. Uh, we're in the middle of a serious pandemic. Uh, we're under level five restrictions where people are not allowed to leave their home county and we ask everybody, no matter what part of the jurisdiction you're in, that you comply with these regulations. Six kilometres away in Emmyvale, many welcomed the new rules, including Kevin Maguire, who travels daily from Belfast to work as a pharmacist here. Um, yeah, cross the border twice a day. Um, I welcome the new kind of checkpoints. Um, it doesn't really make a difference to me, but for people nipping into the town just for kind of unessential things, um, yeah, I think it's just right. It should have been done long ago. Yeah, long ago. Should have, they should have brought it in first, you know. Yeah, to, to try and keep the, the virus, you know, away, yeah. But the new rules don't go both ways. Police in the north can't find people for crossing the border. 
It's mostly been an advisory exercise here today and cars have been turned around, but Gardaí say they will be issuing fines for non-essential travel and not just for the drivers, but also their passengers. Diane Connor, RTE News in County Monaghan. She's known now as the Miracle Dog. Nisha the Golden Retriever was lost for two weeks on the Wicklow Mountains before she was found and reunited with her grateful owners. When the Gotelin family went for a walk near their home a couple of weeks ago with their dogs, they couldn't have guessed at the twists and turns that were to come. Both girls, we call them, um, spotted a deer and ran after the deer and didn't return home. Harley returned the next day, but there was no sign of Nisha, despite an intensive search campaign. And as the days turned into a fortnight, hope dimmed. Yeah, I couldn't sleep for a week, to be honest. I just pictured her there, shivering in the cold. It was awful, to be honest. But then hill-walking couple Kira Nolan and Jean-Francois Bonnet found Nisha, who had survived the cold on Lugnaquilla. The boyfriend carried her on his back the whole way down, nearly 10 k's down contacted us. We drove immediately out to go and pick her up. She was well looked after there and uh, they actually put a coat on her, so they did. Spare coat they had. They were just absolutely amazing. How the eight-year-old golden retriever managed to stay alive for that long on the mountain remains a mystery. I have funny thing, maybe did she go down to the forest and get, you know, get a bit of shelter and, you know, drink obviously water from the river? Did she chase uh, rabbits or whatever, I don't know. After a phone call, I mean, everything was I mean, perfect then, really. So, With the weather set to worsen in the coming days, the advice to everybody is to be careful when on those mountains and when out and about generally. And that includes pets. Mm. Connor Kane, RT News, Ahavana in County Wicklow. Now, still to come, a new deal on pensions. We'll be talking to Jerry Moriarty of the Irish Association of Pension Funds. And a booking boom ahead as accommodation providers gear up for another summer of staycations. We visit Balnahinch Castle to explore the estate and its exotic history. We see the ongoing restoration work in the walled garden and meet the man behind the Connemara Shooting School. That's nationwide after the news. Against the Head is back with action, reaction and in-depth analysis from the Guinness Six Nations Championship. Andrew Conway for the corner. Join the RTE Rugby Panel for their expert insight as they assess the opening weekend of this year's tournament. Against the Head, tonight at 10 past 8 on RTE2 and RTE Player. At Panadol, we understand how pain can feel. Gaining relief helps us to find the joy in those everyday moments. Panadol, meet pain with strength. Hellman's Vegan Mayo has the same great taste and it's plant-based. So it's great for lunchtime filling as well as weekend grilling. Hellman's, Ireland's number one vegan mayo. Take a moment to experience Bliss. Smooth, melting Lindor. From the Lint Master Chocolatier, you choose the moment will provide the bliss. Let today be a good day. Let the shutters up and the customers in. Let the staff know they're valued. I couldn't do it without them. Let me know when to pull back and when to push on. Let the kids know I'll be home for bedtime. Right, let's take that risk. Let's really go for it now. Okay, let's get to work. At AIB, we see brave and we back it with cash flow solutions tailored to your business needs. Talk to our teams today. I'll take you home. Mary, can we talk about this? Across I just wanted to help. Never use an unregistered gas installer. Visit rgii.ie. One second. A life. Take the time for love. Just call it. Disconnection. 
Reconnection. What can Pink Lady do for you today? This is my grandest cow. His name is Bobby. He loves to watch butterflies that live on the farm. And he loves looking up at the stars at night. I think he's looking for the Milky Way. Bobby the Cow inspired me. Find your inspiration and enter this year's Texaco Children's Art Competition. Aldi's amazing Grocery 6 offers with up to 50% off. At only 49 cent each, salted popcorn, cistern blocks, stirrin sauces and multi-use bags. Plus, peanut butter and gold roast instant coffee, now only 149. That's instant savings at Aldi. Aldi, every day amazing. Welcome back. The main news this evening. Gardaí are investigating whether a couple found dead at a house in County Cavan last night may have died as a result of accidental poisoning. The man and woman in their 40s were originally from Lithuania. They had been living in the area for a number of years. Thousands of healthcare workers have begun receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine today. Work is continuing on establishing vaccination hubs before the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines are rolled out to people aged over 85 from next Monday. The Department of Health today reported that six more people have died with COVID-19 and there have been 829 new cases of the virus confirmed. Retirees over the age of 65 will no longer have to sign on for the dole to bridge the gap until they can claim the state pension. A new benefit was announced today, although it will be €45 Euro a week less than the pension payment. Well, staying with that story, we're joined by Jerry Moriarty, CEO of the Irish Association of Pension Funds. Uh, good evening, Jerry Moriarty, and thanks for joining us. The change announced today, uh, as we just heard, it doesn't affect the amount of money that people will get. It doesn't affect the, the fact that they uh, won't be allowed to work even part time. So how significant is it? I think it's much uh, more a change in process than anything else. I think a lot of people who did retire found it difficult that they had to go and effectively sign on for jobless benefit. Um, you know, they weren't looking for a job. And I think they found the whole sort of nod and wink approach to, yeah, we're going to pay you jobless benefit, but we don't really expect you to be looking for a job. They found that difficult to deal with. So and I, I think some people just felt they lacked a bit of dignity at the end of their working life. Um, so I think most people uh, who are in that situation will get, welcome this change in process where they just... Uh, apply online, they get their payment, um, and that's it for the year then. Okay, so it's, it's really a symbolic change, and it affects people who have to retire at 65 because uh, perhaps of their employment contract, but they're not able to get the state pension until they turn 66. That's correct. I mean, a lot of people... Um, in, in theory, you don't have to retire just because you've hit age 65. Your employer has to have an object, objective justification for doing that. But a lot of people plan around retiring at age 65 anyway. And obviously, when the state pension then changed to age 66, um, they would have that gap um, for, for a year in terms of their state pension being paid, which is why the jobless benefit was introduced as a way of dealing with that gap. Um, but it was a sort of clumsy way of, of dealing with it, and, and that's been fixed now. OK, now I'm sure, I'm sure you'll forgive me for saying that pensions aren't generally viewed as a particularly exciting topic of conversation, but they did become a huge issue in the general election, which was held this day last year, most unusually. And that was to do with the raising of the, of the state pension, which had been due to go up uh, to 67. It is a very thorny political issue. Absolutely. And I think it's a thorny political issue all around the world because as people are living longer, obviously the cost of providing pensions um, is getting more expensive. And the ways of dealing with that don't give you great choices. And one of which is to effectively reduce the amount you pay which, uh, by raising the state pension age, or you tax more or you get people to save more. So none of the choices to deal with it are great. Um, and obviously it did become quite a big election issue, I think, in the, in the po poll after the election. It was the third most important issue that people voted on. Now, one of the things the uh, programme for government contains on this subject is the establishment of a commission on pensions, which is uh, working away as, as we speak. And it's due to report by, by June of this year with the government committed to, in, to take an action on its recommendations six months after that. What are the big issues facing that commission and what are the decisions that it might propose? 
Well, I think the big issue really is around the whole sustainability of the state pensions. So it's getting more, uh, we're spending more on pensions every year. Uh, we've got an aging population and that's going to age significantly between now and 2050. Um, so you're looking at, I think at the moment, about 40% of all the expenditure in social protection is on the state pension um, and our, our population is aging. So that's only going to grow over time. That also means because we don't prefund our state pension, it's paid effectively out of taxes and PRS contributions that people pay today as you get fewer people working where you've got a, a smaller younger population and a greater older population then that puts a real lot of pressure on the system so it's how you can make sure that gets paid for um, and whether that involves tough choices like making people work longer or just raising taxes or making people save more separately themselves now one of the other issues is auto enrollment in, in pension schemes what is that and, and has it worked in other countries yeah, auto enrollment is dealing with about half, about half of the working population who don't currently work for an employer who's got a pension scheme in place because it's a voluntary system in Ireland, so employers don't have to pay into a pension for somebody working for them. What auto enrollment does is it actually um, means that those employers do have to uh, enrol their employees into a pension scheme. They have to pay in, the employees pay in, and the government makes a contribution as well, either through tax relief or directly. It's been introduced in many countries around the world, uh, most recently in the UK. It's been quite successful in, in increasing the coverage in terms of the number of people. There are now 10 million more people in the UK paying for a pension than there were 10 years ago. Um, the contribution levels that have been paid in are still quite low, so it may not give people adequate pensions, but it certainly gives people more than they would have had. So it can be quite successful. I think a lot of people like the fact that it's done for them. A lot of people do know they need to do something about saving for retirement, but they just either don't get around to doing it or they just find really confusing so it, it tends to work and that people do actually like that something's being done for them okay plenty to think about there jerry moriarty ceo of the uh, irish association of pension funds thanks for joining us well it's one year ago today since the general election and the pandemic has completely changed how politics operates mary regan of our political staff reports now on how first-time tds are coping Rush hour at Dublin's Docklands, where it once was buzzing with workers. Now the footfall is mostly TDs making their way from Leinster House to the National Convention Centre, where the doll sometimes sits. A time perhaps to reflect on an era-defining year in politics. Among them is James O'Connor, who at just 22 didn't have to wait too long for the sweet smell of electoral success. Can I get an Americano, please? But the job has been a lot different to what he expected. Much of the job of being a TD is engaging with our community. Uh, it's out travelling around the constituency, getting to meet different representative groups and, and individuals as well. Uh, and obviously that is something that we've all been really restricted from. And it's quite an important part of being a, a first time TD uh, is doing that. So I, I badly miss the, the interaction with people. Claire Curran is also among the 48 TDs elected for the first time last year and says the limits on those sittings makes it harder for them to fulfil their mandate. The numbers are reduced and again speaking time is reduced as well. So it's very limited and it's definitely making the job a lot more difficult. You want to be raising the issues that are affecting people locally and you also want to be reflecting the national issues as part of your portfolio as well. For Gary Gannon, it means a shorter walk to work. The convention centre is in his Dublin central constituency. But he says COVID has made TDs more accessible rather than less. I have to be available on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. I have to be doing the public meetings on Zoom. And the public meetings on Zoom means that they're now no longer just local meetings. There are people dialing in from all over the country. So I think I'm a lot more available. My... Um, there's an expectation more to be a national politician than just a politician for Dublin Central. So that's different and you, can never, you could never have imagined that in a thousand years. So even for the Dole's youngest TDs, politics keeps on changing and a historic coalition and global pandemic means that one year on from the general election, nothing stays the same. Mary Regan, RT News, at Dublin's North Quay. Northern Ireland's chief constable has said he believes he retains the confidence of politicians and has insisted he will not resign. It follows a row over the arrest of a man at a memorial event for five people killed in a loyalist gun attack 29 years ago. Relatives of four men and a teenage boy shot dead by Lourdes paramilitaries in Sean Green Bookmakers in South Belfast in 1992 gathered to lay a wreath in their memory on Friday. 
What followed was a public relations disaster for the police. The PSNI has said officers went to question the organisers because the gathering breached COVID-19 regulations. A man who survived the Lourdes attack was arrested before being released later. Critics compared the police action to a lack of action earlier last week when around 50 masked members of the UVF marched through East Belfast. The PSNI says it prevented a planned attack, but there have been no arrests. The toughest week I've had, it's been a tough week policing as well, it's not just about me, but I think it's now trying to draw a line under last week's events and work with uh, communities to see how we move forward. In a bid to avert a possible crisis, the Chief Constable has engaged in discussions with the five parties that make up the Stormont Executive. I'm confident that uh, people recognise what I'm trying to do as the Chief Constable and uh, that, that, that confidence gives me the inspiration to, to carry on. The PSNI was also at the centre of another crisis last week when Brexit customs checks at Belfast and Lauren Port were suspended because of alleged threats from unnamed sources. So was there credible evidence of threats? No, there wasn't, frankly, and this has been obviously an important issue that probably set the tone for the week that followed. Um, there wasn't credible evidence that uh, we were aware of, and it, that, that, that is something we shared with other people that made other decisions. Simon Byrne appears to have calmed his critics and averted a potential crisis around his leadership. But in the fragile political climate of Northern Ireland, he knows the next crisis might not be far away. Vincent Kearney, RT News, Belfast. A technology security company in Galway has announced plans to hire more than 100 new staff. HID Global is to open a centre of excellence at Merview Business Park later this year. The positions will be filled over a three-year period and will bring its total number of employees in the city to 300. Revenue has warned that used cars from the UK are costing significantly more since the Brexit transition period ended. Imports that were originally manufactured in the EU must now have VAT and a 10% tariff paid on them. Groups representing the industry say it could hit supply and put up prices. For the past few years, we've imported around 100,000 used cars into Ireland from the UK. But with the Brexit transition period now over, that's changing because most used cars coming from Britain must now have VAT at 21% charged on them, along with a 10% tariff, driving the price up considerably. Revenue says consumers should be aware. Brexit brought significant changes for anybody purchasing a car from Britain from the 1st of January. So anybody that's contemplating buying a car needs to bear the thought of additional costs in mind when they're doing it because they can be significant. Revenue also says the same rules apply if a person brings a UK registered used car into the Republic via the North. But the situation is being complicated by a recent decision by the British government to unilaterally cut the tax due on used cars being imported from Britain into the North, something the sector here fears could distort competition. The EU have come out to say that they can't do that. So really, until there's an agreement between, reached between the UK and, um, and uh, the EU, we really have to ensure that there's some safeguards put in place to protect the Irish market and really just to ensure that there's a level playing field between Northern Ireland and Ireland. These Brexit effects, coupled with changes to vehicle registration tax, mean it's no longer viable for dealers like Brady's in Dublin to bring in UK imports with possible consequences for supplies and prices. There's probably going to be a crunch point where there won't be sufficient used cars to meet demand uh, in the short to medium term. And however long that stays with us, we don't know until such time as, again, say we can provide enough used cars in the market from our new car business to satisfy that demand. The hope, though, is that before too long, the Irish market will reach its own equilibrium again without the UK used car imports, and Brexit will eventually be left behind. Will Goodbody, RTE News. With COVID-19 restrictions continuing, staycations are set to be a big part of this summer once again. Holiday rentals in coastal areas along the West Coast have already seen a rise in bookings in anticipation of restrictions easing. However, a lack of international visitors will have a serious impact on the hospitality sector. The February surfs up at Lahinch in County Clare with the promise of better things to come in the summer months ahead. Already there are strong indications that families are anxious to book their holidays here, with operators indicating they're very busy with inquiries. 
Uh, in La Hinch, we've seen a very um, busy season coming. Lots of bookings, uh, lots of inquiries. Um, it looks like there's going to be you know, a lot of staycations this year. People really persistent, people literally begging for bookings. You know, they, they really want to come to La Hinch this summer. Falcha Ireland says people are very keen to travel again and bookings for coastal locations in particular are very strong. The public health advice discouraging foreign travel has made Irish households even more determined to confirm their summer holidays here at home. Bookings have certainly picked up noticeably in the last number of weeks, I think since it's become really apparent to the Irish visitor that going overseas probably isn't an option for this year. Uh, there's been a big shift in the last few weeks. Uh, it, finally, the phones have started to ring again. Uh, for a while, they were ringing with all the cancellations. Then there was a pause. And now there's, uh, there's I suppose, strong optimism out there uh, for what's laying ahead for the summer. But while the demand from domestic tourists looks very promising, the lack of international visitors, over 11 million of them in 2019, will hit some hoteliers and others in the hospitality industry here very hard. It's a very mixed feeling here. Uh, we felt last year that we were going to end our travails by the end of, of 2020, but it looks like 21 is not going to be much better. Um, so we're stealing ourselves here for embracing ourselves for a very tough year. Cathy Halloran, RTE News, Lahinch, County Clare. Now, still to come on this evening, 6-1, just a small one, please. The enthusiast recreating his favourite pubs and some other landmark buildings in Lego. And in sport, Ronan O'Gara on yesterday, Six Nations defeat to Wales. Plus, Tom Brady tastes Super Bowl success for an incredible seventh time after leading his Buccaneer side to victory over the Chiefs. This is the semi-final of Ireland's fittest family. Pressure's on, we gotta perform. We need the Allens to bring their best. The fastest family through the swamp gets to go straight through to the final. Come on, tear through it! On your feet now! I'm pooped. I'm absolutely pooped. Come on, tidy up! Way tougher than it looks. My legs are like jelly now. Oh, oh, that was hell. Six families are put through their paces in the semi-final of Ireland's fittest family. Sunday at 6.30 on RT1 and RT Player. In as little as three minutes, you could die from smoke inhalation. A working smoke alarm can save your life. Test your smoke alarms regularly, remove obvious dangers, and have a planned escape. Boost the life of your clothes with Comfort's Clothes Care Treatment. It nourishes and smooths each fiber, helping to keep your clothes like new. Comfort. Long live clothes. National treasures, eh? They're the things that make us who we are. The things that we're proud of. That bring us back to the best of times. Things you just don't get anywhere else in the world. Or curry chips on the way home from a match. That's a national treasure. And now there's one you can have at home. Chef Chip Shop Curry Sauce. Ireland's newest national treasure. Ooh, ah. Cold viruses can be all around us. <laughs> Using Vic's first defense at the first signs of a cold helps to remove cold viruses. Vic's first defense. Don't let the cold virus ruin your game. This Pancake Tuesday, take a sprinkle of happiness, a pinch of fun, and a delicious touch of Nutella. Because pancakes love Nutella. Whatever you watch, if you have a TV, you must have a TV licence. It's the law. That's just one of the terms and conditions of life in Ireland. So get yours at tvlicence.ie or at any post office. This message is brought to you by the Government of Ireland. We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We 
are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. Welcome back. The main news this evening. Gardaí are investigating whether a couple found dead at a house in County Cavan last night may have died as a result of accidental poisoning. The man and woman in their 40s were originally from Lithuania. Thousands of healthcare workers have begun receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine today. As the vaccination rollout gathers pace, a total of 151,212 people have received their first dose. This evening, the Department of Health reported that six more people have died with COVID-19 and there have been 829 new cases of the virus. A Dublin designer has landed a collaboration with Lego after he came to the attention of the toy giant for building replicas of Dublin pubs. He's now moving on to build replicas of other well-known landmarks. Oh, he sits at the corner of Beggar's Bush astride of an old packing case. When pubs closed their doors last year, some of their regulars were in pieces saying it was impossible to replicate what their local offered them. But this Dublin pub lover took matters into his own hands, building Lego versions of his favourite bars. I've always been a big fan of Lego um, and I've constantly been building it. Obviously started as a kid um, and I went and I built, about a year and a half ago, I built the Long Hall pub on Georgia Street. I really enjoyed doing that and afterwards I, I kind of thought to myself, what, what kind of custom build will I do next? It's obviously something we're all, we're all particularly missing now. But, you know, I think pubs symbolise a lot. It symbolises a place where you kind of go and you meet your friends. I speak for myself and many others probably the same do anything to be in a pub and to see some of those friends have some hugs and some cheers as well. You want to go where everybody knows your name. One of those immortalised in Lego was the barman at Hacienda. He got absolutely, got nearly everything in, from, from the wheel to the wrought irons to the flowers. Everything was perfect and I really honoured to, you know, to, that he should do such a, a, a fantastic job. And do you think he did you justice? He, I actually, he made me look too well. <laughs> Gianni has moved on to making micro versions of other icons of the capital. He describes them as a love letter to Dublin and he's looking forward to when he can return to these places in real life. Samantha Library, RTE News, Dublin. Now let's check in on the day's sports news. Here's Joe. Katrina, thanks very much. Good evening to you. Well, after yesterday's bruising defeat in Cardiff, Ireland must now focus on next Sunday's game against tournament favourites France. Now, former Ireland out half Ronan O'Gara says Billy Burns must learn from yesterday and predicts more red cards in the championship. The look on Billy Burns' face summed it up. With the clock in red, the Ulster out half blew the opportunity to give Ireland a final chance to snatch victory. Watching in France, a previous holder of the number 10 jersey had some sympathy, but hopes that it'll be a lesson learned. We've all made errors, every single one of us, and uh, the first guy and the, mo and the person that will be deeply affected by this w will be the kicker himself. But he's got to move on now and get, and get on with it. I don't think it would ever come into selection on, on the failing of one, one skill set error. There'd be other things in that game that he'd probably be disappointed with. But there's obviously reason why he's promoted him into the hot seat in, in number two, which is a very, very important position, obviously, with Johnny's. I suppose, injury profile and age profile. The match-defining moment had come much earlier. Peter O'Mahony's red card just 14 minutes in. You cannot disagree with that because the predominant factor is it's a shot to the head. Players, managers, referees know it's a, it's a red card. Peter is committed for a split second to, to clear out, yet he controls his feet, but he's made contact with his head. And I think... Um, we're going to see so many more of these, I think, throughout the tournament. 
The La Rochelle head coach says Ireland can overcome a confident French team in Dublin on Sunday. Yes, at the minute everything is rosy in their camp, but you've got to you've got to get underneath them. You've got to stir them that they you push them to a place by physically putting tempo in the game that hopefully you may disturb them mentally that they will come up with some crazy decisions as we saw in the World Cup. Ireland will return to training tomorrow when there will be an update on those injured in yesterday's physical opener. Claire McNamara, RTE News. The Australian Open, the year's first tennis Grand Slam, is underway in Melbourne. A small crowd of spectators were allowed. In the men's singles overnight, Novak Djokovic began the defence of his title by dropping just six games on his way to a 6-3, 6-1, 6-2 victory over Jeremy Shardy of France. Serena Williams was amongst the opening day winners too. Williams had a 6-1, 6-1 win over Germany's Laura Siegmund. She bids for a record equaling 24th major title. Last year was, you know, very crazy for the world. And to be able to do what I love and to be able to come out and compete and play at a Grand Slam and um, after the last 12 months, is, it makes me appreciate the moment even more. The second semi-final of the 2020 FIFA World Club Cup is taking place at the moment in Doha. al Alhai of Egypt are taking on European champions Bayern Munich. This game kicked off at 6 o'clock and Robert Lewandowski has put the Germans a goal up. The game is live on RTE2 this evening as well as on the RTE player. Legendary quarterback Tom Brady has extended several personal records by steering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the Super Bowl at their own stadium in Florida. They were comfortable 31 to 9 point winners over the defending champions Kansas City Chiefs as Brady picked up his seventh Super Bowl crown. It's America's showpiece game and even the Star Spangled Banner comes with a statement finish. This was billed as Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes, a young player so good it's felt he could go on to equal the feats of the 43-year-old. But judging by his display last night, Brady is far from finished. He linked up twice with his old New England teammate Rob Gronkowski to give the Bucks a commanding 21-6 half-time lead. And in a game with plenty of needle, even the venerable Brady was mixing it up. Timely then that the weekend was on hand to lower the Floridian temperature a touch. This year's halftime show couldn't match the extravagance of previous years. The Canadian R&B act concentrating more on the music. Such has been the explosiveness of the Chiefs scoring this season. Many expected Mahomes to mount a second half comeback. Instead, it was the Bucks who extended their lead. Leonard Fournette piling on another score. Touchdown! And when they didn't have the ball, their defence harried Mahomes to such an extent he was unable to find his two big playmakers, Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. It all meant Tom Brady became just the second quarterback to win Super Bowls with two different teams. Brady's place in NFL's Hall of Fame has long since been assured. But after this, few can question his moniker of the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Justin Tracy, RTE News. And before we go, the Ireland men's cricket team have been forced to postpone their tour to Zimbabwe in April due to the, to the ongoing COVID-19 situation in the country. Ireland were due to play both T20 and one-day series. But that's the sport for me for now. Back to you, David. Thanks, Joe. Now, before we go, look at the main news again. Gardaí are investigating whether a couple found dead at a house in County Cavan, Cavan last night may have died as a result of accidental poisoning. The man and woman in their 40s were originally from Lithuania. They've been named locally as Rolandus Jarmelvicius and Rita Martin Kiene. The dead man's brother described him as a kind, hard-working man who came to Ireland to make a better life for himself. And you can keep up to date with all of the day's news on the RTE News app. Well, that is the 6-1 News this Monday. From all the team, thanks for watching. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow. But until then, goodbye and do take care. When you can't go swimming because of the rain. Avonmore Soup, the heartwarming goodness that makes everything good again. 
Good evening. Well, we've that really cold air right across the country now. For the next few days, temperatures struggling to reach a couple of degrees above freezing, feeling much colder than that with a biting wind chill effect. We'll have frost and ice and we'll have a scattering of sleet and snow showers, especially for eastern air areas early in the week. More widespread sleet and snow on Thursday. In the short term, though, a yellow snow and ice warning in, in operation for counties from Monaghan down to Wicklow, with snow accumulations of between 2 and 5 centimetres between tonight and tomorrow. And the UK Met Office have a snow and ice warning in operation for parts of Northern Ireland. So those showers being fed in from the Irish Sea in that brisk easterly airflow and for tomorrow making further tracks inland into inland parts there of Leinster, Ulster, even across to parts of eastern parts of Munster and maybe eastern parts of Connacht. Also, the winds ease tomorrow night, a widespread sharp to severe frost tomorrow night. And on Wednesday then, lighter winds, the showers mostly confined to coastal parts of the east and the north. Then on Thursday, we've rain approaching the southwest coast through Wednesday night into Thursday morning, meeting that really cold air, which is over Ireland, turning to sleet and to snow. And that sleet and snow tracking up north eastwards over the country as we go through Thursday, Thursday night and into Friday, still lingering into the east and the northeast there on Friday morning. Then we have a battle going on. We'll have milder air pushed into the southwest at that stage and that's going to try and displace that colder air, but a bit of a battle going on at this stage. So back now to this evening and there's those scattered wintry showers coming in there from the Irish Sea, especially there from Wicklow northwards, northern parts of Leinster and parts of Ulster. And they'll be continuing continuing to move in overnight tonight, some coming in further south too and also along the north coast. And a cold night with temperatures dropping back to between minus three and plus one degrees with frost and ice despite that brisk easterly wind and there'll be gales in coastal parts of the south and the southwest. So far tomorrow, scattered sleet and snow showers, some there across southern parts and we'll have the main band of them there coming in from the North Irish Sea into northern parts of Leinster, parts of Ulster, some too along the north coast. And a bitterly cold day with highest temperatures tomorrow, 1 to 3 degrees and feeling even colder than that in a fresh, strong and gusty easterly wind. That's it for now. Good evening. When you can't go swimming because of the rain. Avonmore Soup, the heartwarming goodness that makes everything good again. The easy choice in your brain when you come under pressure is to what? He's one of Ireland's most prolific sports managers. I am honestly, honestly taking this so serious, it's unreal. But can he motivate seven inexperienced young men? What are you doing? You need to, to reach base camp of the highest mountain in the world. Where you're going, there is fear. Everest. Failure isn't an option here. Failure is not an option. And at what stage did we decide that Mikey wasn't coming with you? Let's see, and get you home. You can't trust anybody but yourself. Be careful. What's the edge? Tell them what's happening. That's just freaking me out. Oh. Davy's toughest team tonight at 9:35 on RTE One and RTE Player. Recent times have been unlike any other. So to keep well and look after our bodies and minds for the months ahead, it's good to decide on a plan. Pick even one way to do yourself some good each day. Being active outdoors is a great way to start. Wrap up and head for a jog or run. Get on the bike or go for a short walk. Even 30 minutes will do you the world of good. Make your plan today to keep well. Find more ideas on sportireland.ie. School shoes are ready. What's next? I don't know. Well, she's definitely going to be the best student in her class. What if she gets really into sport? Maybe not that into sport. Then there's marriage. That could be a big one. And what if I'm not around? And what if... I know. Maybe we should concentrate on the shoes. For 80 years, we've been helping people embrace life's changes. For health, life, pensions and investments, we know Irish life. We are Irish life. In your dreams, Tiger. The Euro Millions jackpot is an estimated 145 million euro. The National Lottery.